Let's talk about the book of Revelation. At Stillwater's Church, we're studying the book of Revelation on Sunday mornings in a series called The Lamb, The Lion, and The Warrior King. And we've learned that it's all about Jesus. You've got to look at the book of Revelation through the lens of Jesus Christ. If you don't, you're going to miss out the main point and the main blessing that uh, you find when you study the book of Revelation. Remember, it's about a person, not about events. It's about Jesus, not just some weird, strange things that are happening. And so we've been talking on Sunday mornings through the book, and then every week I'm doing a supplemental video like this one that will explain some things that will help you understand the Word of God better, that will help you understand the book of Revelation better. So today, I want to talk to you about um, some differing viewpoints on the millennial reign of Christ. Now, we've talked about already, if you've not watched these, I encourage you to go back and watch them. We've talked about what eschatology is, and that simply means the study of things to come. We all like knowing and learning about that stuff because it's about the future. It's about things that haven't happened yet. And it interests us to know about that. It's even in our personal lives, we like to look at what the weather is going to be like tomorrow. So that's a good thing to learn about this. And we learn about what the Bible says that is yet to happen in our lives, that is yet to happen on the eschatological calendar. And so we learned about what eschatology is. We learned about what the major viewpoints of eschatology are and that, you know, a lot of people are going to have a mixture of those beliefs. And today we're going to look at what is the millennial reign of Christ. And that's found in the book of Revelation where it talks about where Jesus comes to earth and he reigns for a thousand years and uh, he is a just king. He is a just ruler. He is righteous. He puts everything to its right order. So what does it mean, the millennial reign of Christ? Well, the word millennium or millennial just simply means a thousand. And so when we talk about the millennial reign of Christ, we're talking about a thousand year period that's described in the book of Revelation. Let me read to you from Revelation 20 verses one through six. It says, then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. And after that, he must be released for a little while. And then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those to whom authority to judge was committed. Also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands." They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years." So let me just give you a brief uh, theological calendar or eschatological calendar of things uh, that will happen, things that are yet to come. And these are things that you can just put into your thinking and know that they are going to happen. Some of these things have already happened. And we'll begin with creation itself. So this is a, an overview, if you will, of eschatology. Um, in the book of Genesis, the very first verse of the Bible says, in the beginning. Well, if it's got a beginning, then we know it's got to have an ending. And so we are introduced to this idea of eschatology or a story of what God is doing uh, throughout time and eternity. Well, the first thing is God created a beautiful, good, and perfect universe. 
the Bible tells us that he created everything and he said it was good. Then we know, of course, after that, that when God created humans, after that creation, their creation, they sinned, they fell. And then, of course, Jesus promised, or God promised, that there would one day be a Savior when the Bible says that um, that the serpent was going to be cursed and that God would put enmity between the man or the woman and the serpent. What he was saying was this, that there would be a a, a, a colossal royal struggle. There would be a heavenly struggle between good and evil, between God and Satan, between real, more literally between mankind and Satan, and that Jesus would come and be our Savior one day, and he would crush the head of the serpent, who is Satan, and he would deliver people from their sins. And so um, this calendar shows us that God created man fell. God promised that there would be a savior one day. And then Jesus was the fulfillment of that. Jesus came to earth as a human being and he lived a perfect life. He died on a cross for our sins and he resurrected from the grave and is alive today. So what's going to happen next? We know that Jesus has already done this. This was the theological calendar up to this point. What are the things that are going to happen next? Well, uh, you're going to have Jesus come again, and he will return literally and physically to the earth. You have a tribulation time, and I've already talked in the past about uh, the differing viewpoints of that tribulation. Some people believe that it would be um, a, a literal time. Others believe that the church would go through it. Some believe the church would not go through it. But we know that Jesus will come again, will judge sin, sinners, false religion, and evil governments. Okay, And then will be the time that Jesus rules and reigns, and he will rule over all creation with righteousness and judge, judgment and justice and restore everything to its original order. And then humans will inhabit eternity, either living with God forever in the dwelling place of God, the presence of God, we call that heaven, or they will be separated from God in eternal death. That's called the second death in a place called the lake of fire. And so uh, not all Christians or scholars agree on the timeline. Okay, I want you to understand that. As we study the book of Revelation, there are some differing viewpoints that you need to be aware of. And I want to give you three or four main uh, thoughts, main viewpoints on the millennial reign. Once again, we've already studied what eschatology is. We've looked at what the main viewpoints of eschatology are. And here are the three main viewpoints of the millennial reign of Christ. First of all, it's called amillennialism. Ah, meaning no. And so literally what that means is that there is no millennial reign. Not that they deny that Jesus rules or reigns, but they deny that it's a literal physical reign uh, for a thousand years. So that's called amillennialism. Let me read to you a little bit about amillennialism. They believe that the millennial kingdom is now. That gospel victory and suffering for the gospel um, will be simultaneous. So in other words, uh, they believe that the church cannot be stopped. Uh, Satan cannot stop the church, but he can persecute the church. And so what you read about in uh, the book of Revelation, uh, in particular, about the tribulation period, they believe that uh, there's not a seven-year period of tribulation, but that's figurative. And that what that means is that up until the time that uh, Jesus Christ uh, literally comes again, that there is an ah millennial, there is no literal thousand year reign of Christ, but that uh, Jesus is ruling and reigning now through the gospel. Okay, so that's the main uh, uh, thought of that. So uh, before the end, Satan will be permitted to deceive the nations and that Christians await the visible bodily return of Jesus Christ and the second coming 
occurs concurrently with the general resurrection and a public rapture of the church. So that's ah millennialism. The second major viewpoint is post millennialism. In other words, post meaning after. So that Jesus will come after uh, the millennial reign. But the difference is very similar to uh, ah millennialism, post millennialism. Um, does not believe that it is a literal 1,000-year reign of Christ, but that is figurative language. So post-millennials believe that um, Jesus will come again, but here's what they believe. They believe that the millennial reign is figurative, and it means that there will be a golden age where increased prosperity, um, fighting against poverty, um, they believe that there's going to be uh, a gradual end of the church's suffering. And, and they believe that in this golden age, that righteousness is going to get stronger and stronger, that the world is going to get better and better all the way up until the time that Jesus Christ comes again. Now, once again, both of these viewpoints believe that Jesus comes again. They just don't believe that the millennial reign of Christ is a literal 1,000 year reign. Amillennial uh, viewpoints believe that um, this is something that is mainly figurative, and postmillennial believe it's figurative as well, but they believe in this golden age where things are going to get better and better. Now, you probably don't have to think too hard to think in your mind. It doesn't seem like things are getting better and better. It seems like things are getting worse and worse. And then there will be those that argue that things are getting better because of the spread of the gospel, because of the vast numbers of believers throughout the earth. Uh, they would even point to things like capitalism and how that over the last couple of hundred years, more people have been lifted out of poverty than ever before in history. And so in their mind, uh, this uh, non-literal millennial reign is that things are getting better and better. It's a golden age that the gospel is spread and the power of the gospel is influencing the world more and more. So those are the two viewpoints that don't take that literal uh, viewpoint of a millennial reign being an actual reign, physical reign of Christ. Then there's what is called pre-millennialism. Now pre meaning before. And what that means is they believe that Jesus Christ comes before the millennial reign of Christ. And they also believe this is a literal reign of Christ on earth with believers who have been resurrected. And uh, they believe that Jesus Christ comes um, before this happens. And they're you, there are groups that believe that the rapture and the second coming of Christ are simultaneously uh, happen simultaneously that are premillennial, and then there are those that believe that the rapture and the second coming are separated by seven years of tribulation. So this is what is known as the premillennial viewpoint, and that Christ will literally reign on the earth for a thousand years. Satan will be bound, and at the end of that time, he'll be loosed. The final battle will happen. Jesus will defeat. Uh, sin and evil once and for all, and then we will be ushered into eternity. So none of these viewpoints are heresy, and they require great study. So my encouragement to you is that you study it. Find out exactly what you believe, and you will be better for it. Remember, the book of Revelation is about a person. It's not about events. It's about Jesus, and he wins. God bless you. I love you. I hope you'll come this Sunday to Stillwater's Church and join us uh, for a wonderful study in the book of Revelation. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday.